You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. Palais Breton. What the absolute F of Palais Breton? Well, they're a classic French sand cookie or biscuit with a buttery salted caramel flavour and they'll make you all international and sophisticated if you make these. So pay attention here if you want to climb the social ladder. And I'm doing these two ways here for you, so stick around for that. The first way is with normal white caster sugar. So I've put 75 grams in my bowl there, along with 90 grams of softened butter. And I'm going to cream these two together. And you can do this with a machine or a wooden spoon or a hand whisk that's seen better days, just like this one that I've got here. And this mix is going to be tricky to work with, but it has to be that way to get these amazing cookies right. They're from Brittany, these. No, no, no. Brittany in French France. And the name means puck, as in hockey puck, because they're dead thick. A bit like you lot watching this. They're traditionally made in rings, but we're not going to faff on with rings here, because, I mean, who's got rings to make biscuits in? I bet you lot haven't even got a pastry tamper, have you, you rank amateurs? And as you cream your butter and your sugar together, you'll notice that the colour starts to lighten a little bit and the texture will be all light and fluffy. And that's when you know that you'll be ready to add the rest of your ingredients. So next, we need to go in with two egg yolks and we're going to whisk them up before we put them in. And then you want to whisk them into your butter and sugar mixture to fully incorporate. And these stunning, and they are stunning, French biscuits can be quite tricky to get right. They need to be crunchy and sandy all the way through, which can be quite tough to do when you make them as thick as I am here. Don't worry though, I've got you covered. I used to make these all the time when I was working in France, where this delicacy is ubiquitous in the patisseries of France's northwest peninsula. I mean, I didn't work in a patisserie when I was over there. I laid tarmac really, really thinly before legging it after payment. But, you know, I just really like Palais Breton. It's, it's funny what you learn when you travel, you know. It broadens the mind, doesn't it? So anyway, let's go in now with 120 grams of all-purpose flour. And we want to sieve that, to be honest because we're being all professional here, aren't we? And making sure we do our best. I mean, this can be quite problematic to do if you're in inadequate digs in a small French village sleeping tent to a room with a load of tarmac laying headbangers. But, you know, I still managed to do it, so it should be easy for you a lot to do this, shouldn't it? And next we want to add a half a teaspoon of baking powder, but definitely don't overdo it with your baking powder. You want these to rise, but not rise too much, because if they rise too much, they'll sink in the middle. And then you want to go in with a quarter of a teaspoon of sea salt. And again, don't overdo it with your salt. If you like salty salted caramel, then you could add a generous quarter of a teaspoon of salt here. Because I know these things can be quite subjective. It's up to you. In Brittany, they would traditionally use local sea salt here. But I don't expect you to go all the way to France to get the salt for these. So just use normal fine sea salt instead here. And now we've stirred all that together, we need to bring it all to a consistent texture. And that requires a little bit of care. You could just whip it all up as if you were making a substandard tar-based material for covering roads and driveways. But we don't want to do that. What we want to do is steal a technique from macarons. And we want to macaronage our mix here. And that just means to stir and then push it down. You have a lot more control this way. And you don't work the mixture too much. This is usually used to push out larger air bubbles from a macaron mix. But this technique works perfectly here. And you don't want to be touching this mix with your hands now, so you want to get it into some cling film. And you want to stick this in the fridge to firm up. And it's going to take at least an hour, maybe even more. You're not just resting the mix here like you would do with a pastry mix. You actually want it to firm up a lot so that you can work with it. Because it will stick to everything before it's chilled this like. So like I said, try not to touch it with your hands. And if you do touch it with your hands and it does get everywhere all over you, well... I'd look, mate, I haven't got a solution for you, you know what I mean? Anyway, I'm doing these two ways here, as I promised you, so let's do another mix, and we're using a good quality brown sugar here, same amount as before, 75 grams, and 90 grams of softened butter, and you already know what's coming here, mix it all up, whisk it all up, two egg yolks in, just like before, give that a good whisk, mix it all up to incorporate, Get your 120 grams of all-purpose flour in. And then go in with your baking powder. And your sea salt. Bring it together. Stirring it up and using that macaronage technique. And I did want to use brown sugar for this recipe. Because you would expect it to give a much more caramelised flavour to these biscuits. 
So I want to show you whether it does or not. And we're going to use these silicon moulds here to bake these Palais Breton in. But a metal mould would work too, and you don't need to oil it or anything like that because there's so much butter in these that it'll be fine. And I've raided my toolbox from my old tarmac lane days to uh, get my measuring stick and show you the size of this silicon mould. Five centimetres on the top there, four centimetres underneath, pretty standard size, mini muffin size. And now my mix is chilled down, we can get it back in, and you will have around 300 grams of each mix here, maybe a little more. And I find it easier to weigh each biscuit as I take them off the main block. And each one would be about 25 grams of your mix. So what I like to do here, there are a couple of ways you can do this, but I think the best way is to roll it in your hands before pushing it firmly into the mould. You can roll the mixture out and cut it in the traditional way, but it's going to stick to everything, you know what I mean? So you have to add a half a tonne of flour to it, and these would just end up like thick, boring biscuits that way. So I'm forming the rest of these, and you'll get 12 from each mix, 24 in total. And you can see as I'm pushing them into the mould there that they're not very even on top. And you want to get them even if you can. You can do that with your fingers. Or if you're a right clever clogs like me, because I'm better than you, I've got a pastry tamper here. So even though it's not an ideal tool for pressing these down, I'm going to do what most YouTube and TV chefs do. And I'm going to pretend that this is absolutely perfect here for this job. So, yeah, it's absolutely meant that. And this is just like pressing down the tarmac on an unsuspecting French sucker's drive. The only difference is, is that when I've pressed down, and firm down this biscuit mix here, I don't have to pack all my tools up, get in the van and run off before it dries and cracks. Actually, these biscuits, when they've baked, would make a much more secure and stable road surface than the tarmac me and my crew would lay as we travelled around France, ripping off the locals. Ah, they were great days. Good crew of lads as well. Stan the Bran, because he was always on the toilet when any heavy lifting needed doing. Good old Andy Razorback and his weirdly protruding shoulder blades. Mickey No Neck and Tommy Two Kids. Yeah, it was good good times. Anyway, we've got to crack on. Um, so oven time, really important. Preheated oven, 160 degrees fan setting. And you want to get these on a tray. You want to bake them in the top third of the oven for 30 minutes. And then you want to leave them in there, turn your oven off, leave them in for another 10 to 20 minutes to dry out and crisp up in the turned off oven. And when they come out, you're looking for a deep golden colour. And you want to make sure the very centre of the baked cookie is a deep golden colour as well. It's a surefire sign that they're done properly. And there's a close-up of our white sugar version. And it looks great, but it might even be a little light in colour. So don't be afraid to put them back in the oven for another 10 minutes if you think they're not fully crisp. And I actually did do this with these ones here. And here's the brown sugar version. And the reason why these traditional Palais Breton are so special, I think, is because this brown sugar version has nowhere near the complexity and caramel flavour of the white sugar version. I know, it's amazing. Who knew? But it's true. Honestly, you can trust me on this. So let's get them on a grid to cool, and a couple of tips for you here. If you test one after they're cooled and you're not happy with the texture, don't be afraid to put them back in the oven, like I said. Ten minutes, crisp them up. And another quick tip before I go, because we're done now. If you want your drive time act, don't always take the cheapest quote, especially if the firm in question as an old hand-painted former ambulance as a van, and the workers can offer no credentials or paperwork. All right, everyone. Watch yourselves out there, eh? And I hope you enjoy these fantastic French pickies. Cheers, my dears. Sarah.